So check out what I dragged home. Now, I've been a fan of these John Deere commercial series mowers ever since I watched George Jones' music video, the Honky Tonk song. All right, so I got the alternator off. Good news. That's the bad news. This is like the worst outcome that possibly could have happened. And it looks like it's been loose on the shaft, so probably the shaft is destroyed. So this just keeps getting better and better. Um, it has holes with threads for exactly this purpose, and that would be great. Uh, however, someone has obviously been messing with this thing because these are all stripped out. So that's just my luck with this thing. All right, guys, so this is starting to look expensive. I'm going to have to really look at uh, the machine and see if it's worth putting more money into because as of right now I've only got 200 bucks in this machine and I'm gonna have to see how much these things are actually worth because um, as of right now I'm looking at pulling the motor all right so uh, I've kind of got to the point where I'm just ripping the engine out of this thing uh, since I broke off the bolt on that alternator and also since I've discovered that plate has been, I got a big crack in it. I figured, you know, it's going to be a lot easier just to rip this thing out of this machine and work on the engine outside of it. So I've got the motor attached to one of the collar ties of the roof here, and we're going to try to pull it out that way. I should get a cherry picker for the garage here, but we're going to try to get this out the old school way. And if I ultimately fail, I'll probably go buy a cherry picker. <laughs> All right, so basically what's going to happen here is that I've got this come along on this chain and we're going to undo the tension from this come along and swing it on this come along so it's going to land right here on the floor. It's not as sketchy as it looks, guys. All right, so basically, now I can take that motor and set it on the ground. All right, that's one way to get the motor out of the machine, so it took a little bit of messing around, but you know, it can be done without an engine crane. Now I've got to figure out how to get it from here, out the door, and in the back of the pickup. All right, so here's a motor out of that John Deere. And I skipped a lot of steps here, but I wanted to show you guys. This is why I'm doing all this work. I gotta re repair this. I'm gonna weld that up, both sides, so I can put that back together. And also, I gotta get this broken bolt out of here so that I can get the alternator back on. So I figured it'd be a lot easier to just take the engine right out. That way I can work on it get easy access to everything I got to work on. Alright, so I've actually ground this out, the crack, with a grinder, four and a half inch angle grinder, and I'm going to fill that with weld, but I'm just tacking it now. I'm going to take this plate right off the engine completely, so I can weld both sides, and I think that'll make a really good repair. So I've gone ahead and removed the bell housing plate from the engine. And I've got it over here on the bench. And you can kind of see pretty well the crack here. I've already welded this side. I'm going to now grind this out to a V so that I can get a good penetrant weld. And then that's going to be basically the repair. So I got that all welded in. A nice looking bead and because i ground a v a pretty deep v in that material that weld is going to fill up that v so whenever i grind that flat that weld will still be you know pretty substantial and because i did both sides that way that's going to be a really strong repair so there it is that's the finished product grind it nice and smooth here where it's going to bolt up against the block and this here you know it doesn't look perfect but I think it's going to do 
pretty good and I think it's gonna be a strong repair you can kind of see here well it might be hard to see but you can kind of see where both the welds butted into each other because I ground this side and I ground that side so that's a very strong weld so put that back on and should be able to move on from this project all right so here's another update I've got the two screws there that are going to be one of these pickups that's where it's going to mount and this crack had cracked right in the middle of where this screw hole was so I got lucky I was able to run a tap through and I was actually able to clean that out enough to where I could reuse that hole so that was lucky so anyway I'm gonna put the flywheel back on and get this thing buttoned back up all right so I'm kind of fast forwarding through a lot of these steps guys because this video I kind of feel like it isn't that interesting but anyway this is the broken bolt I welded a washer and a nut to it and I got it out but as you can see it's kind of starting to pull the threads out of the aluminum body and that's the problem when you break off a bolt in aluminum usually it's because the aluminum is starting to strip out and that's what's happened here so I mean it comes out difficult so hopefully I can put a tap in there and I can clean that up I really don't want to spend a lot of money on this project I've already got a lot of time invested so hopefully we can do it without spending a lot of money I'll show you guys some more all right, and I've also just welded a nut and a washer to the broken bolt that's in here. And we're going to try to extract that. Well, I got it moving. The problem is I think the threads are starting to pull out of here because it goes, you know, a little bit and it reaches a really hard stopping point. So I'm going to have to try to work this one probably back and forth and probably end up breaking this a couple times before I get that bolt out so I just broke off that nut I'm going to have to re-weld that again but I did get a little bit of progress made before the bolt broke before the nut broke off all right so I welded a slightly bigger nut on this time we're going to give that a try let that cool for a minute before I put the wrench on well I think Got pretty lucky here. Sorry about that wiggling, guys. The motor's kind of moving around a little bit. But it looks like I got it on the run. Looks like I got pretty lucky here, guys. I managed to get that bolt out. I had to weld quite a bit here, probably a quarter of an inch. <laughs> I'm really surprised that held. So that's nice. Now I can take this as a metric bolt. I can take that down to the part store and match it. And I can tap that, get some restored threads. And I can put the alternator back on. Very good. All right, so the threads on this aren't the best, but here's a 1.5 gauge, metric 1.5. And that seems to fit just right. So basically that's a metric 10 by 1.5. So that one still should be a pretty popular size. So I shouldn't have a problem getting a bolt. So I've got my metric 10 by 1.5 tap here. I'm just trying to break the threads clean. That aluminum, it's awful stuff whenever it gets a certain age and then it starts to kind of stick to the steel you know, because the bolt itself is steel and the aluminum kind of grabs the steel. So whenever you try to move the bolt, it tends to rip the threads right out of the aluminum. So some of the threads in this block, you know, aren't that great, but I think it'll work because there's enough threads. There's about an inch and a half of threads. So we'll get that all done now. There, so that thread is pretty much good as new. All right, so it looks like this one is a metric 8 by 1.5. So I'm going to tap the alternator up with this. So 
So the idea isn't just to go all at once with these. The idea is just to go a couple threads if you can, and then go the opposite direction to break that thread loose, you know, because basically you're running a sharp knife through those threads because, you know, the teeth on these tabs are really sharp. So as you're running that through, you kind of have to break the flake that it creates. And every now and then, if you take this out, and then you blow that up with air, it'll clear all the crap that you're turning inside there out. The camera might not pick it up very well, but you can kind of see all the flake that's stuck in the tap. You have to take and clean that off every now and then. And blow out the hole that you're trying to chase. Now you only do that just because it's going to make everything clean. It's going to make everything tap that much easier too. Because you don't want to break off a tap in one of these. I've done that before and it is miserable. Because that's hardened steel and you can't drill it. It's a recipe for a bad time. Working on this little Yanmar motor again. I wanted to show you guys the fuel system. This is the fuel hose that's coming off from the carburetor inlet. And this is what used to be on there. Basically that, there's a bolt here, like a 10 by 32 machine screw. And, and this used to feed the carburetor. Now I have a pet peeve about plastic fuel filters. It's just they're a fire hazard. Just They're a disaster waiting to happen. I've had these things melt in the leak and it's just, um, I don't want this. So what I've done is I've went and I've got a steel fuel filter. You know, you can get these at any auto parts store. And uh, I've made a little bracket that's gonna bolt in that same location. And I found a piece of old, I think this is eighth inch wall material, whatever it was, I cut a slit in it. And then I took and welded, you know, a quarter inch nut with a nice cap bolt. And I've fit this so that the fuel filter and everything bolt right in. I've used some old 3 uh, 3 16 material that I had. So, I mean, this thing didn't cost me hardly anything to make, just some argon in the welder. And that's going to be a really nice solution. Especially because this rubber line here doesn't bend as steep as this smaller line here. And I don't like this because you can't really put a clamp on it. Um, so, anyway. We're going to ditch this original setup, and I'm sure you can get these at John Deere, but I think this is going to be a much better filter solution. Check it out! The motor is back in the machine. This motor goes together like extremely easily. So there's four motor mounts, four bolts that hold the motor itself in. And then there's one shaft in the front of the motor with like a hockey puck disc type coupler, I guess you'd call it. There's four bolts. That thing goes back together really, really easy. And then on the back of the motor, that's reserved for the PTO. So, I mean, other than that, you got fuel lines, uh, throttle cable, choke cable, uh, radiator hoses, uh, electrical connections, and that's it. I mean, other than that, it's super, super gravy. I mean, these things are so easy to take the motors in and out of. I'm glad I did that instead of trying to work on this thing in the machine. Um, going back in, I purchased a two-ton... Harbor Freight engine hoist, uh, lifesaver. I should have had one of those a long time ago. So the motor went back in without a hitch. I wanted to show you guys this fuel filter bracket that I made, and it houses a really nice steel fuel filter, and I finally got rid of that plastic garbage line that was on this thing. Now, from what I understand, this was original equipment. Um, you can still get the same filter, and it's just, it's kind of a piece of crap, to be honest with you guys. Um, it's a fire hazard. I've had these plastic fuel filters melt and then it's, it's just a matter of, okay, now you got fuel leaking on a hot motor. I mean, it's a recipe for disaster. So we've got fuel rated hose now. We've got a really easy to find fuel filter. It's easy to replace and we should be miles ahead of the game with this setup. As you can see, I got the alternator back on the machine. New bolts. That bottom bolt, that was quite a pain, but it's all, uh, it's got new hardware now, it's bolted up, the belt tensions now, and there's no slop in the alternator, so that's exciting. This thing will live to run another day. I've also gone ahead and I put coolant back in this thing. Um, 
going to have to wait and start it up and bleed the air bubbles out of this thing. But so far, there's no leaks. It's looking really good. I'm excited. Hopefully, this thing will fire right back up. It was running great before. Hopefully, we didn't change anything. So, I mean, obviously, we changed some things for the better. Hopefully, it'll still run. So, I'm going to end this video right here. Um, this is the second video in this series. Basically, the motor is repaired now. It, I'll get it running. That's no problem. It was running before. It should run again. The third video I'm going to make, the next video in this series, is going to be all about the PTO. Now, just a spoiler alert, that is a total pain. I mean, the PTO on these things must have been designed by an engineer who hated mechanics because it is the worst PTO shaft that I've probably ever dealt with. So look forward to that video, and I'll actually get a video of this thing hopefully mowing again. That'll be really good, so we'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.